the first thing we look at when presented with something that purports to be from the beginning of the 18th century, which this does with its wonderful veneers, is to see whether it can be original, whether it's made up or whether it's all of one piece and a genuine thing. You look inside the drawers and nice oak lining, which you see here, and the rules are that that should always be made of pine with a little slip of oak at the top. This was common practice and how most things of this type were made, most cabinet furniture. Now, when you see an oak at the back, it's either a nice oak one, which has been veneered at a later date, or it is a Dutch or continental piece, okay? Mm -hmm. So we need to investigate further. So we look at the front, and here you've got burr elm and burr walnuts, and then you've got laburnum, which is, we now call oyster wood. And we want to make sure that if these handles are original, then there will be lots of marks inside. And if they show on the outside, that will be quite fine, because that means they've simply been changed. If you don't see any scars on the outside here, but you do on the inside, then obviously it's been veneered at a later date. All right? Okay. Now, the nice thing is that if we look down here, you can see the scar of an old handle and oh, yeah. a little pinhole from another one. Cool. And here, we come here, look, there's a little hole, and that's where the Victorians put a rather large wooden knob. So it's had three or four sets of handles. So to make really sure, and to prove my point, we take the drawer out, and there you can see, there's the oh, knob, yes. the hole for the, the, the large Victorian one, and there are the other two holes where the split pins went. That's what I mean. Now, if the outside had not shown those, or evidence of those holes, you'd known that it would have been re-veneered or veneered at a later date, all that being replaced. So there's your authenticity. This was made round about 1710. Oh, cool. Yes. Quite old, baby. Yes, yes. Now, all is wonderful until we get to these legs. Those legs were not yet designed when this was made. Now, those were probably put on 50 years or 60 years after it was made. Now, then, another nice thing you've got here is because of this veneer, missing, <laughs> we can see how it's made. Oh. And there you've got the most wonderful English dovetail, right. right, at the bottom of the carcass, oh, yeah. okay? Yeah. And also, one final guide to authenticity, when this veneer was cut, it was hand cut with a multi-bladed saw. And you cut it no less than a sixteenth of an inch thick. It wasn't possible, it wasn't humanly possible to cut down a, a branch or cross a branch accurately and maintain anything less than a sixteenth. It was too unstable. So this is hand cut, and it is thick as can be. Right. Wonderful. So there you are, perfectly genuine. Now tell me the family history. Well, as I said, it's just been around in my grandparents' house and my parents' house, and right. then obviously I inherited Right. But it's had a bit of a rough ride. That bit of veneer came off when it was moved in a, a state car and the, the lid was flapping, and, and the, the wind got underneath something and blew it. And the top flap. We actually saw the bit of veneer <laughs> disappearing down flap? the road. Yeah, yeah I'd yeah. taken in one of On the, the drawers. On the road, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Despite falling out of a car, the condition is extremely good. You have to think of a value, what it was worth before it fell out of the car. <laughs> it's not very different to now, actually. I don't think it did it any serious commercial damage. It is such a good-looking piece that it ought to be insured for six and a half thousand. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's nice, eh? Yes, it's lovely. Very nice.